Here we are with not one, but two conflicts going on in both Europe and the Middle East. Are you stressed out by the looming stock market crash that you keep hearing about? You could lose your investments and retirement savings. You could lose your job and your home. You could end up being this guy in a post-apocalyptic future where bottle caps are the new currency. Regardless of the grim situation you are imagining yourself in, one question must be answered. Well, what do? In this video, I'm going to distill down the three causes of a stock market crash based on historical evidence and what you should do in each situation to come out on top. Let's get into it. A person is smart. People are dumb, panicky, dangerous animals, and you know it. First, it is important to remember that all three causes have one common thread, fear and uncertainty. Even if the initial reason for stocks dropping is legit, the downward momentum due to fear and uncertainty will push the market lower than the theoretical real value. When the market falls into the deep end, the sharks of the investing world start to feed. We will always have a lot of cash on hand. Billionaires like Warren Buffett will keep mountains of cash ready to scoop up companies trading at a massive discount. Unfortunately, if you're like me, you do not not have mountains of cash. Your tactics will be different, which we will come back to. The first cause for a stock market crash is a catastrophic event. A perfect example in recent memory is the 2020 stock market crash due to COVID-19. In March of 2020, the S&P 500 dropped nearly 34%. Unemployment shot up to nearly 15% at its peak, but worst of all, we had to wear masks. Fortunately, COVID-19 seems to be largely behind us. The chances of another stock market crash due to COVID-19 are very low, but that's not the only type of catastrophe. The Gulf War recession took place between July 1990 and March 91. When Iraq invaded Kuwait, it caused the price of oil to rise quickly. Rising oil prices tend to push inflation higher and higher and are heavily correlated with economic recession. And here we are with not one, but two conflicts going on in both Europe and the Middle East. Between Russia, Ukraine and Israel, Gaza, it is a safe bet that the oil industry will continue to be affected. As you can see from this graph from the U.S. Energy Information Administration, oil has recently come down a bit from its peak in the middle of 2022, the same time that we experienced experienced peak inflation. If either of these conflicts picks up and the price of oil jumps again, we could be in for another round of rising inflation. So what is the best way to invest in this situation? In high inflation, the cost of living is on the rise, and one of the major costs that go up is rent. Real estate tends to perform well in times of high inflation since rentals can push the extra costs onto tenants. This graph shows the average monthly cost to own in blue and the average monthly cost to rent in red. Notice it does not matter if the housing market is going up or down, rents are always going to go up with inflation. Inflation. Investing in REITs, which stands for Real Estate Investment Trust, is a great way to get exposure to a wide range of real estate, both residential and commercial. A REIT is sort of like an ETF or an index fund for real estate. So should we go out and invest every dollar we have into REITs? Not quite. Our strategy will need to be a little more refined because of the second major cause of a stock market crash, a bubble. Not that kind of bubble, this kind. I would venture to guess everyone watching this video is familiar with the 2007-2008 financial crisis, which coincided with the bursting of the United States housing bubble. It is notoriously very difficult to spot a bubble, and even more difficult to know when it will pop. In fact, a whole movie was made about a guy who managed to spot the US housing bubble and actually profit big time. We can safely assume that you or I won't be able to spot one with 100% certainty. Even though rents might technically go up, investing heavily in real estate just before a real estate bubble pops is not ideal. You want to be in a position to invest after the bubble pops. Investing just before means your returns will lag behind the greater market and carry a lot of risk from knock-on effects that we will discuss later on. Another example of a bubble bursting is the 2000 dot-com bubble, where internet and technology-based companies took a huge hit. Just like the housing bubble, the market was greedy. The technology sector was overvalued, and when internet and tech startups began to fail, resulting in their stock prices going to zero, market greed turned into market fear. Massive sell-offs caused investors to lose an estimated $5 trillion. Reactionary public panic about a stock market crash can also be a major contributor to it, inducing panic selling that depresses prices even further. The price of a stock is only worth what the market is willing to pay. If there is enough fear in the market, the stock prices of many companies will drop below their theoretical real value. So should you pull all of your money out of the market to avoid getting tagged by the next bubble? No, high inflation is strongly correlated with stock market crashes. Not investing just means you are sure to lose buying power due to inflation. The answer is to diversify across all sectors of the economy and make sure you have exposure to sectors that perform well in times of high inflation, like real estate, commodities, and consumer cyclical sectors. Be careful not to overexpose yourself to sectors where investors seem overly greedy. For instance, in 2022, Bitcoin was on an absolute tear until it dropped more than 70% from its all-time high. To this day, Bitcoin is valued less than 50% of its all-time high. Warren Buffett says it best. If you have a temperament that when others are fearful, you're going to get scared yourself. 
you know, you are not going to make a lot of money in securities over time in all probability. Be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy only when others are fearful. Warren Buffett is always in a good position to capitalize when people are selling at the bottom. Everyone knows you're supposed to buy low and sell high. So why do people sell at the bottom? The main reason that people get their investments and retirement savings wiped out in a market crash is because of the economic recession that either causes the crash or is a knock on effect from the crash. Thanks for staying with me this long. My mission is to help you make more money and save more money. If you're enjoying the video, please give me a like down below. It helps with the algorithm and I'd really appreciate it. The economy generally follows a boom bust cycle. During expansion, the economy experienced a period of healthy and sustainable economic growth. Employment rates increase. Lenders make it easier to borrow money by providing low interest rates. This results in higher spending, higher demand, and higher production rates. Until a peak is reached, a peak is the highest point of a business cycle. Asset prices rise too rapidly and consumers take on too much debt. The expansion is over and a contraction begins, otherwise known as an economic recession. The U.S. economy has gone through this cycle many times. The duration of the different segments will vary greatly, but on average, we experience one full cycle roughly every five years. Sometimes the cycle plays out naturally as the economy overheats and cools off. Other times a recession is brought on by a catastrophe like COVID-19 or the bursting of an asset bubble like the U.S. housing crisis. Regardless of the cause, there are six characteristics that are commonly associated with economic recession, and they all feed off each other. Initially, production is racing to keep up with consumer demand until rising inflation causes consumers to cut back on purchases. As consumers cut back on purchases, businesses are forced to cut back on production. Less production means unemployment will rise, resulting in more people cutting back and more businesses cutting back, and I think you get the idea. When this death spiral occurs, the gross domestic product will inevitably decrease and the stock market will plummet. The reason people lose their investments and savings during this time is that they are more likely to lose their jobs while the cost of living is up and the markets are down. People are forced to sell their investments at the bottom in order to cover their expenses. This is the number one outcome that you need to avoid. The answer isn't sexy. You just need to give yourself a buffer. Don't make the mistake of trying to buy the dip before you have a solid emergency fund. If you put all of your extra money into the market on the way down and then you lose your job before the bottom, you will be forced to sell at a loss. High yield savings accounts and money market accounts are yielding 4 to 5% at the moment, which is a solid return. If your job is vulnerable during an economic recession, you should aim to put roughly six months of living expenses into one of these accounts. You will still be making a decent return on this money while avoiding the huge downside of having to sell your investments at the bottom of a bear market. After you have an appropriate emergency fund in place, you can feel free to buy the dip. Just be sure that you diversify across all sectors of the economy so that your portfolio will perform well during times of high inflation and you won't get blasted if a market bubble breaks. This is the only way you will be able to buy like Warren Buffett instead of being bought by Warren Buffett at the bottom of the market. If you enjoyed the video and would like to learn more about creating a financial safety net, please be sure to check out this video where I go over the cheapest and most efficient way to guarantee your retirement. Till next time.